Well, it's time to talk about the great game of doubles. You know, doubles is played a lot more than singles, mainly because there's so many people around the world playing tennis, and you can get four on a court instead of two. When I'm asked, what's the best way to win doubles tournaments or matches, I always say, get the best partner. One thing I'd like to point out that in playing a lot of doubles, it really can help your singles game. By that I mean, when you play doubles, you're hitting the special areas that really produce great shots for your singles game. And on top of that, you're in that short court area where you're playing half volleys, low volleys. You have to use the lob a little more. So in effect, play a lot of doubles, it's going to help your singles game. And to help you with your doubles, here's one of the greatest doubles teams of all times. They've won everything, particularly great in Davis Cup, Stan Smith, Bobby Lutz. For those of you that already play doubles, Maybe some of the things we'll say today will be helpful for you and your doubles game. For those of you that never played doubles at all or just like to play singles, maybe some of the things we'll say will be a revelation to get you more interested in the game. There's some real keys to winning doubles. One is you really must think of attack at all times. You can't pull your horns in and play defensively. Always think of trying to hit the ball, going to the net, and trying to win the point from the net. Now you have to make a decision of who's going to serve first. Generally, the stronger server will serve first. But in some teams, you might have a server who serves well because his partner is moving to the net, and it's much easier to win those games because of his partner. On other teams, you might have somebody who doesn't warm up very fast. He might take two or three games to get into the match. He may not serve very well the first game. So in that case, you'd have the other player serve. There's really a difference in strategy in serving in doubles versus serving in singles. In doubles, there's really more of a premium in getting that first serve in first. So what you'd want to do is try to take off a little bit of speed and add a little bit more spin on your first serve. As it goes over the net, it will dip down and go into the court much more effectively. Great job. Now you can also vary the spins on the serve. If you hit a slice serve, that will slide away from your opponent's forehand if he's a right-hander. If you hit a kick serve, that'll bounce away from your opponent's backhand and stay very high, which is a difficult return to hit. On the second serve, obviously the most important thing is to get it in. You try to hit that second serve with more spin than you do the first serve, and really hustle to get to the net behind your serve. Okay. And the club level, the backhand is usually the weaker shot. So you hit your serve to the player's backhand, and you come in and try to make your first volley as close to the service line as possible. That's it. Now, you may ask yourself, where should you stand when you're serving from the deuce court? I believe you should stand approximately in the center, between the center line and the outside of the alley when you're serving to your opponent in the deuce court. The reason for that is that you'll be bisecting the angle that they'll be returning to the most effective way. When serving to the ad court, it's really the same as serving from the deuce court. You want to stand right between the center of the court and the outside of the alley. This will give you an opportunity, after you make the serve, to cover your half of the court if you come straight in behind your serve. The server's partner has a job to do. He's trying to protect his half of the court. Great volley. When my partner is serving from the deuce side or the ad court, I like to stand in an area in the center of the service box, midway between the net and the service line and the singles line and the center line. The return of serve in uh, doubles, especially for the club player, is a little bit different than in singles. In singles, you have the whole court and you can uh, return it any place. But in doubles, you really have just one half of the court. You're trying to keep the ball low when they're coming up to the net to volley. The general rule for returning serve, either from the do side or the add side, is that you try and stand approximately on the baseline and just inside the singles line. When I'm returning against the first serve, my main objective is to try and chip my return at the foot of the onrusher. Or I may try and vary my return a little bit by either going directly at the person, my opponent, up at the net, or I may try and lob down his line. When I'm returning against the second serve, if I move in inside the baseline, try and take the serve more on the rise, I try and become a little bit more offensive. What to keep them honest? I think the return of serve is uh, the most important stroke in uh, in doubles. 
Uh, whereas the server is trying to get his first serve in, in doubles, you really have to get a high percentage of the returns in the court. And I think that the best teams throughout the years are really not the big servers, but are the, the people that are returning the ball most consistently. The receiver's partner should have an active role in each point. Make your opponents know that you're there and that you're going to get involved if they hit any ball near you. The overhead is really key in doubles. Because if you can't hit an overhead, you're going to be constantly retreating and going back to have to hit a lob back or hit a ground stroke when players hit a lob against you. In doubles, the target normally can be right down the center of the court because you'll be splitting your opponents. Or it may be an angle, and you've got an angle to hit the open court. So it's really important to practice that overhead. If your partner throw up a lot of lobs, then you hit overheads, and then you change around and do the same thing for your partner. <laughs> the lob is a very important shot. Many club players particularly think that the lob is only used by beginners. But if you watch pro tennis players, in doubles particularly, they'll be using that lob quite a bit. If you're playing against two players that like to rush the net and crowd the net, that lob is an effective shot to keep them away from the net so you can use your other angles and shots down the middle as well. The volley in doubles is also essential, especially for a club player. The volley is where all the points are won or lost, and that's where you're trying to get to to finish off the point. But if I get a low ball or a low volley, I'm generally making a defensive shot trying to hit to the person, my opponent, who is in the backcourt. Trying to take the net in doubles is really important. The reason for that is that you're closer to the net, you have more angles to hit, and you're hitting the volley. The ball may come up a little bit higher above the net, and since you're closer, you can knock off that shot for a winner. Also, when you hit the ball from the net, the reaction time for your opponents is going to be less, and so they're going to have a less of a chance to be able to get your return back. If you want to play aggressive doubles, you must learn to get to the net, and you must learn to volley well. Great shot. Now, when we play, we always serve and follow our serve to the net. Now, you may not want to do that all the time. You may feel more comfortable by serving and staying back and maybe coming in on the second shot or the third shot. But always keep in the back of your mind that you really want to get to the net if possible. The doubles court is much bigger than the singles court. You've got the two allies on either side, so you want to be able to cover that court effectively. As a team, you've got to move to the sides of where the ball is. In other words, if the ball goes way to the right, the player that's closest to the right moves towards the alley to cover the alley, and the player on the left will cover that ball down the center. Another important thing in doubles is who takes the balls down the middle. For the club player especially, it's the person who has the forehand volley. He'll take it over the backhand volley. Now, if a lob is hit, it's the person who has the overhead to hit. Not the backhand, high backhand volley, which is the most difficult shot in tennis. Thank you. And if the partner is not able to cover the shot, he's got to be able to say to you, you know, yours or mine, but you want to be covering the court as a team together and moving so you can cover all the angles that your opponents can hit. Sometimes you may get caught in a situation where both players end up on the same side of the court chasing after a ball. Well, in this situation, the player behind should be the director and saying what his partner should do in that situation. In other words, he may say, stay there or go back. And whatever he does, he'll make up for what his partner's been doing. Communication is an important element in doubles. Before you get on the court, talk to each other. See who's going to be taking the lobs, who's going to be taking the balls down the middle. Even when you're out on the court, talk to each other. Stan, for instance, might tell me when he's going to poach, so I'll be able to take over his side. Okay. Are the eye formation again? Why don't you cross it? Okay. Sit, sir, that guy, I'm thinking. Yeah. Arthur doesn't know where we're going to cross or not. I'll cross again. Talk to each other. The opponents are always watching you doing this, and they don't know what to expect. Good overhead. One of the points of communication is that when I'm going to serve, and I'm going to serve wide, I should tell Bob, okay, I'm going to serve for the player's forehand, so you should be alert for the angle and possibly a harder return. Great shot, Lester. 
So remember, to communicate with each other, your team out there, you're not just playing singles. Why don't you serve it into him and I'll take it. Okay. Doubles is a game of divide and conquer. You're trying to play the ball down in the middle generally. But if you find that one of your opponents is weaker than the other, try and direct most of your balls towards him. Now, the question may come to mind to you is, if you have a very strong player and a weak player playing together, who plays which side? Now, the two schools have thought about this. One is that the stronger player should play the backhand side because he gets all the crucial points, the break points or the add points. The other school of thought is you have a strong player playing the forehand side because if you don't get those deuce points, you'll never get any add points. The important thing in doubles is you want to play the style that's most suited for you and your partner. But at the same time, if you play against a different team that has an unusual style, then you have to adjust to that style. In other words, if you play against a team that poaches all the time, the best thing to do is early in the match, hit a few balls down the line. That'll freeze them in those positions so they don't use that advantage of poaching. If you play against a team that's very steady, what you'd like to do is hit a few more winners than you normally might. Or if you play against a team that's very aggressive and makes a lot of errors, all you have to do is just keep the ball in play and you'll win most of the points. One of the variations of doubles is a one-up, one-back formation. Now, if you play this formation, the key thing is, if you're in the backcourt, you want to try to keep the ball cross-court away from your net man. And your partner should think about crossing or poaching at the opportune time. Now, if your partner does intercept a shot, then you've got to cross behind your partner and cover the area that she or he has left. Sometimes what we do in returning serve is play the both back situation where both players are in the backcourt. This comes about if your partner is not returning well or if you're playing against a strong server, you may both wish to play back so that you can just get into the rally somehow and you might want to throw up a few lobs. You're just trying to get into the point. Most of you have probably heard about the I or tandem formation in doubles. Stan and I have used this on several occasions when our opponents are really returning the ball well and we try and use it to just change the style of play. Now when your partner is serving in the formation, you want to be three or four feet to the right if he's serving to the forehand side or three or four feet into the backhand side of the court. You can go and intercept a ball or you can stay there and guard your section of the court. Let's talk about how you practice doubles. Now, when we practice on the court before matches, or when we're warming up right on the court, we go through a certain routine. We practice returning serve like we would from the courts that we're playing. In other words, when I play the deuce court, I'd have Bob serve to me in the deuce court, and I just practice hitting my doubles return back diagonally to the doubles court. We also practice hitting quick volleys at each other, in other words, quicken up our reflexes and to get ready for those quick exchanges in the matches. Another thing we like to do is we like to practice poaching. In other words, we might go across and hit some poaches on the run, and then we'll have the returner practicing down the line as if someone was poaching against them. We'll also have one player at the baseline, one player at the net, and hit lobs to the other player, just like we would be hitting in a doubles match. The practicing methods I've just mentioned aren't cut and dry. The most important thing is that you do practice your doubles. There certainly isn't much anyone can say after that complete lesson in the game of doubles. But I'd like to back up a few of the points that Bob and Stan made. Number one, and I think it's the most important thing in doubles and perhaps singles as well, is get that first serve in. It really does two things for you. It keeps your opponent way, way back in case you want to come to the net. And also, if you want to stay back, it keeps him from having the early part of the court to take advantage of it. Also, I'd like to say that doubles sort of varies according to the court you're playing on. If you're playing on, a, say, a fast concrete court, you should play a little more aggressively because you're going to get paid off by making a good volley or a good overhead. It pays off to get in there on a fast court. If you're playing on a slippery court, the chances are your best uh, way of winning might be the defensive way. That is to say, play more ground strokes, don't try to get to the net, and really use that secret weapon that we always talk about, the lob. And believe me, in doubles with two people covering this court, you can really break down a lot of good offensive doubles players. But above all, doubles is a fun game. So pick a doubles partner that it's fun to play with. It'll pay off in the long run. 